Hello, my name is David Gorman, and I'm with the storage marketing team here at AWS. Thank you for joining us today. For about the next 45 minutes, I'm going to talk through some recent trends in the business drivers for organizations moving to cloud. Enterprises expect an average of 30 to 40% data growth annually, pressuring the limits of on-premises infrastructure. They want to increase their agility to take advantage of this data and deliver new capabilities to the businesses while reducing the escalating costs they're incurring on-premises. As cloud adoption matures, organizations are rapidly expanding their use in terms of the diversity of applications and use cases, increasingly deploying their existing enterprise workloads on cloud. In this talk, you'll learn what trends are being seen across organizations like yours as they move to cloud, factors that drive choices of what services to adopt, and cost reduction and agility benefits they realize over time after their adoption of AWS storage services. As we engage with thousands of customers, we discern multiple reasons and drivers to move to the cloud. Customers tell us digital transformation is a top priority, even in this COVID-19 impacted economic time. Some organizations still want to strategically modernize a customer facing or back office process to differentiate their organizations. Others are seeing competitors and in other industries able to adjust to the global adversity because they're already on the modernization path with cloud. Development and process agility for current staff and teams is also key to many organizations. Development teams come to cloud almost by default now. But economic demands also prioritize cost reductions and optimization, and many sectors of industry are facing a downturn in demand, where moving to cloud can actually allow lower spending for on-premises systems and lower management costs. The already existing goals of also closing data centers and not running servers is still a driver for many, and a decision to outsource applications also can drive the shift to cloud. As you contemplate your moves, we want to give guidance on all of these. Massive data growth isn't a new topic, but the new challenge is how to actively create value with this new data. Data is not passive. It has to be stored in an environment that enables using it for the organization's benefit. The amount of data created over the next three years will be more than the amount of data created over the past 20 years. The world will create over three times more data over the next five years than it did in the previous five. By 2023, more than 40% of the world's data will be stored in hyperscale cloud data centers. Enterprises expect 34 to 40% data growth annually adoption of cloud services by enterprise organizations to replace or complement their existing infrastructure has evolved at a rapid pace and most organizations are actively using cloud in one form or another today. An organization managing 10 petabytes of data today will likely generate and store nearly 14 petabytes of data the following year. This data growth is only accelerated by the need to mine the data for greater insight via artificial intelligence and analytics. In many cases, this pace of growth may exceed existing capacity plans and quickly pressure the limits of on-premises infrastructure. Unexpected data growth variables, like the rise in remote work during 2020, only puts pressure on organizations to quickly adapt to new realities. The COVID-19 pandemic, while a unique occurrence, has highlighted examples of how organizations are adapting to disruption by leveraging the operational agility and economic advantages of cloud. Because of this flexibility, cloud-related spending and budgets have maintained current levels or even expanded despite reductions in overall IT spending. What was once a build versus buy comparison has become, we couldn't build that ourselves. The scale, innovation, and variety of global cloud services within AWS is the enabler of business and not just a replacement infrastructure. Organizations relying on on-premises compute and storage infrastructure often deal with issues like inherited storage silos, tightened IT budgets, managing legacy and next-gen workloads side by side, operational overhead, and unpredictable resource requirements. Adoption of cloud services by enterprise organizations to replace or complement their existing infrastructure has evolved at a rapid pace. 
In a recent report, IDC noted that total cost of ownership and upfront costs are in fact some of the least important factors driving the initial decision to use cloud instead of other alternatives. IDC believes this highlights the growing prioritization of other benefits delivered by cloud, such as performance, security, global reach, and most importantly, access to adjacent services. IDC also concluded that customer focus on TCO and cost is driven lower in the prioritization by digital transformation oriented buyers who prioritize workload and application performance, protection, and value generation. The economic benefits of cloud storage capacity are well understood, but the long-term value and benefits of adjacent services and tightly integrated partner offerings provide customers with the agility to differentiate and capitalize on new features as they mature through their cloud journey. The breadth of services and partners in AWS represent the ability to create value from data once it's in AWS storage especially as customers begin to extract value from long inactive data sets sitting in their archives or storage silos sitting in other parts of their organization. Digital transformation remains one of the primary drivers for application migration and modernization initiatives. And this trend isn't slowing down. Modern cloud storage services are a key component of digital transformation initiatives. And in an environment of shrinking budgets, new and existing storage solutions will be graded against this expectation more than ever before. One important piece of this puzzle is maintaining a flexible IT infrastructure. Changes must be made in budgeting and efficiency when it comes to enterprise IT. And storage will be a key contributor to both the efficiency and cost savings in the immediate future, as well as the enabler of new competitiveness going forward. In light of the pandemic, IDC expects enterprises to continue to allocate more budget to cloud. Prior to the pandemic, 78% of IDC respondents reported that their cloud budget had increased in the past two years. And IDC expects this trend to continue. Per IDC, scaling existing applications and retiring existing or legacy hardware are some of the primary reasons that organizations initially consider cloud services. At the point of initial adoption, Customers are typically focused on the performance, security, and global reach of the cloud platform. Access to adjacent services within the cloud ecosystem, such as databases, internet of things, and analytics, also plays an important role in the initial decision to use cloud. This presents an interesting dynamic to the context of cloud adoption. Buyers care about TCO and price predictability when selecting a cloud provider. Buyers will always care about price when it comes to purchase decisions. However, customer perception of the value of cloud includes both cost-related and business-related variables and goes beyond TCO to include the potential value of a platform's embedded security and data protection features, as well as the ability to access adjacent services for em emerging use cases, such as IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, or databases. In the second quarter of 2020, though, spending in public cloud IT infrastructure surpassed spending on traditional IT infrastructure for the first time. That's not a huge surprise because we've been trending in that direction for a while, but the trend accelerated last year. The pandemic accelerated moves away from on-premises hardware infrastructure for practical reasons, like the desire to keep employees safe from physical dangers. It's accelerated moves that customers were already planning to make to the cloud. The hardware infrastructure market has reached a tipping point and cloud environments will continue to account for an increasingly higher share of overall spending. Per IDC, 2020 saw massive shifts to online tools in all aspects of life, including collaboration, virtual business events, entertainment, shopping, telemedicine, and education. Cloud environments were a key enabler of the shift with spending on cloud IT infrastructure increasing 47.8% year over year in second quarter of 2020, and exceeding the level of spend on non-cloud IT infrastructure for the first time. Among cloud deployments for compute, networking, and storage, IDC projects storage platforms will be the fastest growing segment, 
with spending increasing 21.2% to $27.8 billion for 2020. But what we've heard most is that customers moved to the cloud because it allowed them the flexibility to respond to events happening to their businesses in a way that they could never do with on-premises infrastructure. So not only did moving to cloud reduce their costs, it also enabled them to scale seamlessly and address new business challenges. Looking forward, IDC notes the trend that cloud infrastructure is increasingly preferred by organizations for digital transformation initiatives and IT modernization. The competitive need to take advantage of new capabilities, the scale of operations that organizations anticipate supporting with their data, and the economics that allow them to save, scale, and protect their data in the cloud are drawing them to cloud. The continued pace of growth in cloud spending, up 38% in 2019, and then forecast to increase 34% for 2020 once all that data is in and analyzed, to a to worldwide total of $66 billion is evidence that this transition has taken place. Bringing that transformation back to the value of storage, IDC interviewed AWS storage customers about the business benefits they've seen as a result of moving to AWS. IDC recruited these participants in the study and developed their own methodology to quantify the benefits. The white paper footnoted on the slide and available in the links at the end of this presentation includes information about the organizations and the details of IDC's methodology. So you'll be able to read the details behind the numbers. In terms of geographical distribution, three companies were based in the United States with the remainder in Australia, Belgium, France, New Zealand, Singapore, and the United Kingdom and a cross-section of industries was represented. The scope of questions was about improvements noticed after adopting AWS storage services. But interestingly, the candidate responses went beyond the immediate storage improvements. Customers identified benefits beyond the capacity, performance, and features of the storage services they were using. They talked about having more efficient and productive IT infrastructure management, data analytics, application development, and storage management teams. More efficient use of storage resources, reduce the cost of both operations and IT infrastructure. Study participants confirmed that the agility, scalability, and performance of AWS storage helped their organizations address business opportunities and thereby increase revenue. Reductions in unplanned downtime also provided revenue-related benefits. IDC's methodology for quantifying the benefits looked at the initial cost of infrastructure operations, personnel, and time before adoption of AWS storage services. And then at the same factors down the road, once the organizations had matured with AWS storage in order to assign dollar values to the benefits. The greater agility and scalability with AWS improved existing business operations and made it possible to address new opportunities. IT staff was more efficient because fewer cycles were spent on repetitive administration and instead was repurposed to value generating work. The total operating costs for storage decreased with the adoption of AWS storage versus on-premises infrastructure. And finally, the fact that the organizations experienced fewer unplanned outages once adopting AWS storage meant that they gained back the lost employee productivity and revenue that they once had to accept losing when on-premises. The report includes exact customer statements so we can learn in their own words how they say they benefited from the move to AWS storage. IDC's quantification of results in people, time, and financial currency saved, operational efficiency gained, and business enablers created is a roadmap that can help you think through potential benefits for yourself. But what the customers actually say provides another window into how their own jobs and results have changed. One trend was the ability gained to pivot to new opportunities and needs. The foundation of data on AWS storage and the flexibility to apply a collection of services against it gave customers the flexibility to adjust as needed when needed. This was an advantage in both reacting to market challenges and in taking advantage of new opportunities when they were identified. 
Another theme was an improvement in time to market for new features and services delivered by the interviewed organizations. The, this included customer facing services, as well as internal processes that improved the efficiency of IT teams. The ability to add AWS storage and services as needed, when needed, with simple setup and configuration makes it easier on IT teams to stand up new services and even iterate on the services they already have. The extra benefit of the simplicity of managing AWS storage is that IT team resources were freed from administrative tasks and able to repurpose their time toward developing the next innovations for their organization. The flexibility to scale up and down as needed and only pay for what is being used was highlighted as being valuable in meeting spiky demands and seasonal trends. Economically, organizations were free to spin down resources and stop incurring costs, which is something that was not possible when they were previously operating on-premises. I mentioned that new capabilities are drawing organizations to cloud. Then they look at the economics of what cloud storage to adopt. When looking at cloud pricing, it's tempting to just compare the cloud storage cost against the acquisition cost of storage hardware. But that doesn't show you the full picture. In traditional on-premises infrastructure, there are several other costs that you don't incur when running in the cloud, including the cost of data center space, power, cooling, the cost of building and maintaining a network, hardware and software maintenance expenses, and the headcount costs to operate this infrastructure. You also typically incur the cost of underutilization. That is, any storage capacity you purchased but aren't using is in effect increasing your per gigabyte cost of data stored. In contrast, using services like Amazon S3 and Amazon EFS, when you delete data, you stop paying for that storage. So there's no underutilization expense. And finally, when on-premises, you pay for the cost to migrate data from one system to another, which can be substantial, particularly in terms of time required to do the migration. That periodic migration due to hardware upgrades is gone when you move to cloud storage. And you also get to take advantage of real-time improvements and cloud storage services. In the cloud, your costs follow your workloads usage patterns much more closely. You pay for the data stored, of course, and depending on the service, you may pay for requests made to the service, for example, to get and retrieve data or to move data between tiers and data transfer out of the service. These are all costs you would have borne as, fist, as fixed expenses in things like networking infrastructure on-premises. We've just made it so you only have to pay for the portion of those resources you actually use in the cloud. Then you have the ability to cost optimize your applications over time in the cloud and stop paying for many of those resources. Something that you just can't do on premises when you've already made the fixed infrastructure investment. I encourage you to get started with a TCO analysis based on common patterns we see at aws.amazon.com slash TCO dash calculator. When we compare apples to apples, we find that the total cost to run in AWS is favorable to running on-premises. Similar to what we saw from IDC earlier, CIOs tell us that cost is not the key factor in their decision to move to cloud. Agility and innovation are usually at the center of their motivation. However, being at least cost neutral is table stakes before considering any migration to the cloud. We typically see at least 20% savings with just a lift and shift. Over the first months, customers continue to optimize their EC2 instances and S3 storage classes for additional 20 to 30% savings. Then by adopting higher level services, customers further optimize, many seeing savings of 60% or more. This is an important point to consider. The benefits of cloud services and the opportunities to optimize operations, agility, and economics continue as you scale your operations in the cloud. Continual innovation, new features, and new services become a catalog from which to choose rather than new projects you need to build, and their benefits are cumulative.
As the first generally available AWS service launched in 2006, Amazon S3 has developed over time to optimize flexibility and costs and is an example of the AWS customer obsession and growth of cloud storage. Let's start with a look at S3. With its low storage costs, unlimited scalability, 11.9's durability, and 15-year record of operational excellence, Amazon S3 and S3 Glacier is the best foundation for a data lake. Because S3 is object storage, all of your data can be stored in its native format, allowing you to retain flexibility to adapt to different use cases in the future. And S3 has multiple different storage classes and a vast array of management functionality that helps you reduce your storage costs. Since its introduction, Amazon S3 has constantly innovated on behalf of our customers to make cloud storage more cost effective and easier to manage. The graph you see on the left shows the over 80% reduction in S3 standards price since 2006. Let me share a bit about how we think about storage classes and total cost reduction. S3 storage classes provide customers different ways to store their data in S3, and they are a reflection of AWS pricing principles. These principles are not unique to S3, but are really an AWS wide concept. In S3, they guide our thinking when it comes to storage classes. First, no upfront cost, no investment required, which allows you to innovate faster. Second, pay as you go with no commitment required. You can scale up and down and just use the amount of storage you want. That means you don't underutilize your storage because you really pay only for what you use. However, the more you use, the less you pay, which is the third principle. For example, in the S3 standard storage class, you have automatic integrated volume discounts. The more storage you use, the less you pay. Finally, there is the principle that you pay less as AWS grows. That really means we innovate on behalf of our customers. Over time, we have launched more regions and more availability zones. We have introduced more storage classes and we have passed savings onto our customers in the form of price reductions. And on the right, you can see how we've continued to add more storage options over time. S3 intelligent tiering is an example of a feature being added to help customers continue optimizing their operations and costs long after they've made the move to AWS storage. S3 intelligent tiering is designed to optimize storage costs automatically when data access patterns change without performance impact or operational overhead. It's the first cloud object storage class to deliver automatic cost savings by moving data between two access tiers, a frequent access tier and a lower cost infrequent access tier when access patterns change and is ideal for data with unknown or changing access patterns. Most recently, we launched two new storage classes in S3 Outposts to deliver object storage to your on-premises AWS Outpost environment and Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering Archive tiers, supporting automatic data archiving to further reduce storage costs by up to 95% when objects become rarely accessed over long periods of time. By extending the cost savings capabilities of S3 Intelligent Tiering with the addition of archive and deep archive access tiers, S3 enables customers to automate the full data lifecycle in a single self-managed storage class. We launched all these storage classes because customers told us they have use cases which they want to store in S3 and they are looking for the ideal storage class. Amazon Elastic File System is a simple serverless set and forget in Elastic File Storage for AWS Compute Services. EFS is ideal for cloud native applications in elastic workloads, such as content management systems. EFS customers are primarily builders who require shared file storage for their applications and workloads. They value the simplicity, scalability, and integrations with other AWS compute services, including containers and serverless. You can get up and running in just seconds in as little as two clicks and have petabyte scale elastic storage that's trivially easy to use. EFS provides the capabilities and integrations you need to confidently run business critical apps needing shared file storage in the cloud. EFS is elastic, 
automatically scaling up or down as you add or remove files. And you pay only for what you use. Your performance automatically scales with your capacity, which, by the way, EFS file systems scale to petabytes in size. EFS is also highly available and designed to be highly durable. We offer a 4.9's availability SLA, and we're designed for 11.9's of data durability. To achieve these levels of availability and durability, all files and directories are redundantly stored within and across multiple availability zones. EFS file systems can withstand the full loss of a single availability zone, while still providing the same quality of service in the other availability zones. EFS is serverless. You don't need to provision or manage any infrastructure or capacity. And as your workload scales up, so does your file system, automatically accommodating any additional storage or connection capacity that you need. EFS file systems support up to tens of thousands of concurrent clients, no matter the type. These could be traditional EC2 instances, containers running in one of your self-managed clusters or in one of the AWS container services, Elastic Container Service, Elastic Kubernetes Service, and Fargate, or in a serverless function running in AWS Lambda. You can also access your EFS file systems from on-premises via AWS Direct Connect and AWS VPN. In terms of performance, EFS file systems provide low, consistent latencies in the single digit millisecond range for active file system workloads and can scale to tens of gigabytes of throughput and support over 500,000 IOPS. And finally, EFS storage classes provide you with automatic cost optimization and help you achieve an optimal price to performance blend for your workloads. With our native lifecycle management capability, files that you aren't using frequently will be automatically moved to lower cost storage classes, completely transparently to users and applications. By leveraging fully managed file solutions like Amazon FSx for Windows File Server and Amazon FSx for Luster, customers can use the same file systems that they use on-premises today, but they no longer have to worry about the administrative overhead of setting up, securing, maintaining, and backing up their infrastructure. Customers tell us how much they hate NAS sprawl in their data centers. It's expensive, hard to maintain, and grows like crazy. By moving workloads like home directories and content management to the cloud, you can remove the operational barriers of managing storage and get the cost benefits, and most importantly, elasticity of cloud storage. We built Amazon FSx for Windows File Server to make your NAS migration easy. When you migrate on-premises NAS data to a fully managed FSx for Windows File Server, you keep all the same features you're used to having while massively improving scalability, availability, and performance, and getting the elasticity of AWS. We built Amazon FSx Luster for compute-intensive workloads like machine learning, high-performance computing, and other high-performance processing. FSx for Luster offers low sub-millisecond latencies and tens of millions of IOPS. In late 2020, we launched HDD storage options, reducing storage costs by up to 80% for throughput intensive workloads that don't require the sub-millisecond latencies of SSD storage, including genome analysis, financial simulations, and seismic data processing. And in November 2020, we announced a new live storage scaling feature so customers can now more easily scale their file storage with a click of a button. This enables greater flexibility with growing capacity based on your changing business needs. It means you no longer have to worry about the size of the file system during file system creation, avoiding the cost you would have incurred on premises by over allocating storage to be safe. Amazon Elastic Block Store delivers highly available and performant block storage for your most demanding business critical applications like databases and ERP systems, delivering on all functional levels, speed, simplicity, reliability, scalability, security, and cost. For example, 
SSD backed IO1 volumes deliver up to 64,000 IOPS and 1,000 megabytes of throughput per volume. You can use multiple volumes for even greater performance, up to 80,000 IOPS or 1,750 megabytes of throughput per instance. EBS volumes are reliable for mission critical applications. Volumes are, are architected for a 99.999% availability and an annual failure rate between 0.1 and 0.2%. Security is our number one priority. We recently announced the ability to encrypt all new volumes in your account with a single opt-in setting, simplifying the process of reaching data compliance goals. These are just a few examples of the functional advantages EBS provides. We have scaled and architected EBS to offer industry-leading performance and functionality for the vast types of customers that AWS serves, from first-time builders to global enterprises to major government institutions. Proven experience, leadership and storage, and customer obsession in our product development is what has allowed us to develop EBS into the robust, versatile block storage service it is today. Now let's talk about what customers are actually building on AWS storage. Many customers start simply with a storage only migration. They look for those workloads that don't really require an application migration, and they start their cloud journey by just moving the data. Backup and restore is usually an easy place to start because it's relatively non-disruptive to existing IT processes, and practically every major backup software vendor integrates directly with Amazon S3. Customers with large data archives for long-term retention or for regulatory compliance are also quickly moving to AWS because they know how unreliable and costly their on-premises tape infrastructure is. By moving that data to AWS, they can save a lot of money and ensure that their, their data is there when they need it because of the constant data validation and fixity checking that we perform at AWS. Home directories are another storage only move that can provide significant storage cost savings with minimal disruption to existing processes. And over 10,000 customers to date have built their data lakes in AWS. They choose AWS storage because they know that data movement is one of the hardest parts of building a data lake. By storing their data in AWS, they can bring a variety of analytics tools to the same data set, eliminating the data movement complexity and tearing down data silos. By consolidating all of that data in one place, it makes an AWS data lake an ex excellent foundation for artificial intelligence and machine learning data. Data used in high performance computing environments or just large scale big data analytics. However, one of the most common sets of workloads that customers want to move to AWS is their business critical applications. Things like ERP solutions, databases, and the content management systems for their websites. And often they simply want to lift and shift those applications into the cloud without making major changes right away. AWS provides a number of services to make these lift and shift migrations possible while also helping customers save money in the process. As you begin your journey to the cloud, you'll quickly notice one thing across pretty much any workload you want to migrate or deploy. Storage is central. A well-architected data storage strategy helps you turn storage from an expense into a strategic asset. And AWS storage is absolutely the best at helping customers get more value from their data faster. It's the foundation for advanced innovation and customers start finding value from the moment they move their storage to AWS. AWS storage often accelerates customer business transformations like this. First, customers build a new application or migrate an existing one to AWS, leveraging our offerings for development or application discovery, tracking and movement. AWS has the most options for moving data in the industry, making it simpler to move any kind of data onto the AWS platform. Once their data is in the cloud, the reliability, security, and management capabilities only found with AWS kick in. AWS has more compliance certifications than any other vendor. Customers using AWS can take advantage of security capabilities that are built to meet the needs of the most demanding organizations on earth. 
capabilities that many organizations would never have access to in their on-premises environments. Then they build with AWS and more third-party partners than found anywhere else. The systems that pull insights from this data at scale. Customers like Infor that works with thousands of Microsoft SQL databases or FINRA that plays back the US stock market in real time or Monsanto that moved their petabytes of geospatial analytics to the cloud. Customers also develop new use cases that transform their businesses. Sony DADC cut media workflows from weeks to hours. iRobot is mapping connected homes with millions of robots without managing any servers. Sprinkler can recover thousands of servers and petabytes of data in another global region in less than four hours. Sirius XM took a small custom application acquisition to global production at scale in 90 days. This kind of innovation has drawn millions of customers to leverage AWS storage services. And that success has created a flywheel effect that allows us to bring you more innovation at an accelerating pace. Let's look at a few other customers. NASDAQ is a multinational financial services and technology corporation that owns and operates the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. NASDAQ operates a total of 27 markets, a central securities depository, and clearinghouse across a variety of asset classes in North America and Europe. It is home to nearly 4,000 listed companies globally across its markets and also provides its mission critical technology to other market infrastructure operators located in 50 countries. In just four years, the amount of data ingested by NASDAQ's Amazon Redshift data warehouse surged, surpassing four terabytes per day. NASDAQ needed to change its approach to managing data for analytics. To scale to support its growing data, NASDAQ chose to build the foundation of a new data lake on Amazon S3 using Amazon Redshift Spectrum to query data in both the S3 data lake and Amazon Redshift data warehouse. As Robert Hunt, Vice President of Software Engineering at NASDAQ put it, we were able to easily support the jump from 30 billion records to 70 billion records a day because of the flexibility and scalability of Amazon S3 and Amazon Redshift. In addition to that, they can now load financial market data five hours faster and Amazon Redshift queries run 32% faster. Philips is a leading health technology company focused on improving people's health and enabling better outcomes along a, along a continuum from healthy living and prevention to diagnosis, treatment, and home care. Philips leverages advanced technology as well as deep clinical and customer insights to deliver integrated solutions. Philips wants to drive out inefficiencies in every aspect of the industry, from prevention to diagnosis, treatment, and home care. To achieve this, Philips is striving to help healthcare providers address what the industry calls the quadruple aim, improved patient experience, better health outcomes, improved staff experience, and lower cost of care. Addressing these obstacles would require individual healthcare systems to embark on expensive time-consuming projects involving a great deal of redundant heavy lifting. Philips has been working for years to help the healthcare industry overcome these challenges through the Philips Health Suite digital platform. It consolidates patient records, data from wearable or home-based remote medical monitoring equipment, and information from insurance companies or healthcare organizations. Built as a managed service on AWS, it will be able to take advantage of new AWS functions and features, including machine learning based application development and analytics. Some benefits of Philips Health Suite built on AWS are AWS offers virtually unlimited scalability. And the Health Suite simplifies remote patient monitoring, connects and manages devices in the cloud, integrates analyzes and stores multiple sources of data, speeds time to market for healthcare solutions, 
ensures privacy and security compliance, and minimizes complexity and reduced costs for healthcare providers. Dale Wiggins, Vice President and General Manager of Philips Health Suite Digital Platform said, the two main reasons we chose AWS are the breadth of services and the ability to scale. By running Philips Health Suite Digital Platform on AWS, we're able to provide our customers with the power, security, and the flexibility of AWS services with the healthcare specific added value we built on top. Blackthorn Therapeutics is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on developing precision medicines to treat central nervous system disorders by using advanced data science and neuroinformatics to map drug targets to specific brain circuitry and corresponding behaviors. Blackthorn does this pharmaceutical therapy design work based on MRI images and identifies participants for clinical trials developing therapies for central nervous system disorders. Blackthorn creates machine learning algorithms for internal use and to deploy in actual clinical trials to pre-screen for eligibility for the trials. Standard file systems aren't designed to be concurrently accessed by a large number of EC2 instances and containers running on Amazon e EKS. Blackthorn's data lake is based on S3, but they noticed after several performance benchmark tests that results slowed down when they tried to share and process large volumes of MRI imagery data. After a POC, Blackthorn determined that Amazon FSX for Luster was a fit for their high performance needs and unique shared file capabilities requirements. Blackthorn was able to set up one FSX for Luster file system for their data scientists to manage machine learning training workflows, greatly simplifying their architecture and improving time to insights. Oscar Rodriguez, Senior Director of Innovation and Technology at Blackthorn said, FSX for Luster enabled us to create a high performance MRI data processing pipeline Data processing time for our ML-based workflows was cut by 20x, down to hours compared to days and weeks. They were able to scale up quickly, taking advantage of fast access to compute capacity. Seamless integration with Amazon SageMaker enabled their data scientists to easily scale and manage the life cycle of their ML training data models. Our last example adds an additional angle, the involvement of an AWS partner who worked directly with a customer. Customers come to AWS in many ways, and if they have a partner they already work with, we're happy to support that choice. Cinesite Studios is a leading digital entertainment studio with credits on animated features like The Addams Family, Extinct, and Riverdance, and visual effect projects such as The Avengers Endgame, Rocket Man, The Witcher, and the James Bond movie franchise. Cinesite has a visual effects division and an animation division in offices in Montreal, Vancouver, London, and Berlin. To make its visions come to life, Cinesite requires significant rendering capacity and maintains an on-premises blade server farm in their Montreal facility with 136,000 render hours per week and additional rendering capacity in their Vancouver and London offices. It's not financially viable for a Cinesite to maintain rendering capacity on premises to meet 100% of their needs 100% of the time, especially considering the fluctuation demand they see from customers. So they use AWS as an extension of their rendering farm. Their local rendering footprint meets 80 to 85% of their render needs with the balance being fulfilled by AWS. Because of the benefits Cinesite has seen with their use of AWS, they want to further reduce their on-premises rendering capability to 70 to 75% of their needs. Some of the benefits they've realized with AWS are paying for high-performance servers only when they need them, which means when they made a sale. Having access to the latest and most powerful hardware as needed, which saves them money by limiting licensing costs and avoids having to buy their own servers that would be obsolete in three years or less and 
perhaps most significantly, Cinesight's customers are always asking for greater capability. And rendering on AWS allows Cinesight the capability to meet those evolving customer needs without making significant capital investments in their own infrastructure. Recently, Cinesight experienced network freezes that were preventing them from working on key projects and started working with AWS partner Cumulo to solve this problem. Cumulo offers hybrid file data services that Cinesight could deploy on-premises and run on AWS, allowing them to maintain their existing model. With Cumulo and AWS, Cinesight has been able to avoid performance-related delays while seamlessly scaling rendering capacity to AWS. In addition to the technological capability both Cumulo and AWS offer to meet Cinesight's needs, Cinesight has been very pleased with customer support since their projects can run 24-7 and AWS and Cumulo support are available to resolve any problems. Hopefully, these examples have been helpful for you in imagining the ways you can create new value using AWS storage and other adjacent services from AWS and our partners. I'll leave you with a few quick thoughts. First, data growth is an opportunity, not a problem. The key is to understand how to use the data to derive value. The capabilities, scale, agility, and innovation in cloud are drawing more workloads from on-premises. You'll be most successful if you start planning how you're going to leverage the cloud now, instead of waiting until competition builds an advantage by moving first. The move to cloud will usually reduce your total cost of ownership, but there's a much bigger opportunity to create new value with the scalability, performance, and agility of cloud storage. Optimization is only the beginning. Moving to the cloud will give you new capabilities through ongoing innovation. To help you work through what to do next, I provided a few resources that are related to what we've discussed today. The IDC business value paper I talked about is in this list, and you can look at the details of how IDC calculated the financial benefits they called out. The other resources linked here will give you additional data points that may map the cloud moves you're considering or highlight some that could be opportunities for your organization as well. With that, I want to thank you for joining us today. Our goal was to share context of the moves organizations like yours are making to the cloud, how they're approaching the decisions, and what benefits they and you may be able to expect. Thank you again for your time, and we'll now open it up for questions.